I will be discussing the new approaches to mental health nursing that were underway at the Rockwood Training School for Nurses during its uh, roughly first three decades. And Paul noted that uh, I was very smart to choose uh, a time period where we don't have any alum from, <laughs> so I can seem like the expert. So I can't, of course, talk about the, uh, the nursing school without first addressing very briefly the origins of mental health care in Kingston. And this, of course, is a very familiar story to a lot of our audience, so I'll try to be as brief as I can. In uh, 1856, the Crown purchased the estate of uh, John Cartwright as, uh, to be used for an asylum uh, for the criminally insane, as the term was used at the time. This was under the direction of John Palmer Litchfield, who, of course, is a very controversial figure in, um, in our history. Needless to say, patients lived in terrible conditions. And this, of course, is not to minimize that history, but I will be focusing on uh, the Rockwood Training School. Uh, construction on the main Rockwood building began in 1859 and uh, the site was opened in uh, 1862 and the building was designed by William Coverdale. And of course, I'm sure you're mostly familiar with, uh, with this large structure, which of course is still standing just down the way today. Uh, this was part of a larger trend in um, Canadian mental health during the mid-1800s uh, where permanent uh, lunatic asylums, as they were known, were being established throughout the country. Overcrowding was typical of these institutions and the attendants were poorly paid and often uh, selected for their ability to control patients. Um, institutional violence and, and wrongful confinement as well, unfortunately, were, uh, were parts of the, the system at the time. So in response to this, of course, came mental health reform. And two key figures in both the Kingston and larger Canadian context are, of course, doctors William Metcalf and Charles Kirk Clark, who I'm sure are very familiar to uh, many of you. Metcalf was assigned uh, superintendent at Rockwood in 1879, and in 1882 he uh, persuaded Clark to join him as assistant superintendent. After Metcalf's untimely death in 1885, Clark reluctantly agreed to take on the role of superintendent, and he did so so as to, quote, protect several hundred defenseless creatures from a political hireling who might be pitchforked into the position. So this is very typical. This uh, type of commentary is very typical of uh, Clark and really represents his opinion of uh, the provincial administration. Both Metcalf and uh, Clark were proponents of the hospital model of care. This was considered a progressive alternative to the asylum system and the two were tasked with transforming the asylum into, uh, sorry, an asylum for what were known as criminal lunatics into a hospital for the mentally ill. It's well documented that the two rebelled against traditional techniques and uh, some of the reforms that they implemented were of course the restraint, uh, the abolition of restraint methods as well as granting general privileges to patients. Metcalf and Clark oversaw the transition of Rockwood from a place of incarceration to a hospital that offered treatment. One of the crowning achievements of Clark was of course the opening of the Rockwood Hospital Training School for Nurses. The program began in 1888, although there is of course some debate as to the specific time frame. Uh, it did offer a two-year course in uh, nurse training. It was one, it was, sorry, the first of its kind in Ontario and one of the first in North America to offer mental health nursing as a specialty. The school was made possible when the government increased the wages of female employees. And according to Clark, the compensation that was offered was, quote, likely to attract the most desirable class of girls. Uh, prior to its establishment, nursing attendants were untrained and uh, typically from, from the lower class. 
Admission to the program required that uh, applicants pass an English exam as well as demonstrate a general knowledge of nursing subjects and according to Clark again, uh, possess higher intelligence than the average nurse. Uh, it was also implied that <laughs> it was also implied that they come from an educated or refined background. During the early days of the school, both Clark and uh, Rockwood, the hospital institution in general, uh, were the subject of much criticism. Uh, criticism fell into three main categories. The first uh, was the question of was there a need for uh, specific training or specialized training in mental health? Uh, was it a worthwhile pursuit? Another area of criticism was that the program would create, uh, quote, lady, uh, lady nurses, a class of lady nurses. So this, uh, this criticism of, is, of course, uh, brings up questions of uh, what training women received, where they could practice, and what threat this posed to uh, the old order. Another area of social tension would have been from within Rockwood itself. So labor historian Patrick Connor has indicated that at this time at Rockwood, we would have had a, a displacement of the, the attendants by a trained class of uh, nurses. And so this would have caused social tension within the institution. However, the, uh, the school continued and Clark persevered. And in, 18, in his report, his annual report from 1897, he indicated, quote, we have reason to believe that this school has been the greatest service in the development of a class of nurses so superior in every respect to those of the past that comparison can scarcely be made. This is one of many examples of Clark promoting the school, uh, justifying it, as well as answering his critics. And it's, uh, this is one of many examples. Uh, typically, it goes on in, in uh, the annual reports that uh, he wanted to promote the school. What changed this, uh, this need to continually uh, emphasize the school and, and justify its existence, in my view, is the establishment of Lee Hurst. Lee Hurst was a nursing residence that was opened on graduation day 1904. And it was basically a, a residence that provided nurses and student nurses with their own dedicated space away from the hospital. The name, of course, is significant. Uh, Lee Hurst comes from Florence Nightingale's uh, childhood and later summer estate. The primary focus of the program was, of course, its curriculum and teaching. Students worked under the direct supervision of a qualified nurse, and this image here is, uh, is illustrative. We have a, a nurse, a qualified nurse on the left-hand side. She has a band on her nursing cap, and she's working with a student on the right who has a plain white cap. Towards the, the end of this early period, there starts to be more of a balance between practical nursing and uh, the mastery of academic subjects. Students received instruction in, of course, the specialty of mental health, mental disease and their treatments, but also received a more general education in other subject areas. The culmination of the year's uh, activities, the academic year, was of course the series of examinations that the students wrote. Uh, I like this example from 1918. It's uh, psychiatry and hydrotherapy examination. And uh, questions eight and 10 are particularly interesting. Eight, for what do we use continuous baths? And question nine, name the ways in which uh, water may be used as a therapeutic measure both internally and externally. Uh, I like these two questions. They're very uh, reflective of the types of treatment that was offered at the time. And uh, the accompanying photograph, of course, shows a student nurse providing continuous bath therapy to two students, or sorry, to two patients. They might have been students. So life at Rockwood was uh, between life in um, practical nursing, in the hospital, 
uh, life with, uh, with the curriculum and then living in residence at Lee Hurst, the experience for the students was a very comprehensive, all-encompassing one. So they were really integrated into life at Rockwood. The culmination of the two-year program was, of course, the closing exercises, or also known as graduation day. And uh, this is a diploma. It belonged to Agnes Lefleur, and it was granted in 1908. This is the earliest photograph uh, that we have in the archives of a closing exercise. It's uh, the 1922 graduating class, and we also have the, the accompanying program. Uh, events from the graduating exercise uh, included the Florence Nightingale Pledge, the distribution of uh, diplomas, pins, as well as awards for individual achievement, addresses, and ended with uh, the orchestra. So it's worth noting that uh, graduation was truly a Kingston event. It uh, extended far beyond the Rockwood community. And in 1900, uh, in the Rockwood Review, it <coughs> indicated that there were over 400 Kingstonians in attendance. So it was really quite an event. The period of uh, discussion, of course, covers World War I, and Rockwood nurses made very uh, significant contributions to the war. At the outbreak of World War I, the superintendent of nurses, as well as 11 other nursing staff, left for the Ontario Military Hospital at Orpington, England. In 1916, 21 nurses left for Orpington, 11 of whom were <coughs> alumna. The departure of the nurses and additional medical staff, of course, uh, reduced the academic program during the time. However, towards the end of uh, the war and then into the early 1920s, we start to see the enrollment increase again. And this, of course, was to fill the need for mental health uh, specialty during the post-war era. We're lucky to have a very personal connection to World War I and Rockwood Nursing. This is a photograph of Bella Kennedy. She is the grandmother of, uh, I think someone recognizes her. She is the grandmother of Deborah Steele, who is an employee at Providence Care. Uh, Bella graduated in the class of 1911. She then continued on working at Rockwood and uh, left for the Ontario Military Hospital in Orpington in 1916. Uh, in 1917, she contracted influenza, but she did recover and uh, serve the rest of the war at various military hospitals in France. And at the end of hostilities, she returned to Canada. So early nursing school alumna went on to accomplish many uh, different things. It was common to remain at Rockwood and practice uh, mental health nursing, but other young women moved to different Canadian and American cities. It was also common, of course, to practice mental health nursing as a specialty, but others uh, pursued different avenues, such as uh, general hospital work, as well as tuberculosis hospitals, public health, uh, and administrative roles as well. So to me, the, um, the training that these women received really opened up opportunity for them. This is another connection to Rockwood uh, that we have, and I should also note that I know in this room we do have a lot of personal connections to Rockwood as well as multi-generational connections, but this story might be a little less known. This is a photo of Agnes Lefleur McGarvey. We saw her diploma earlier. Agnes is the grandmother of uh, one of our members of the Board of Directors at Providence Care. Agnes graduated in the class of 1908, and then she moved to New York, where she practiced nursing until later returning to Kingston. And I'm going to take a major chronological leap now. <laughs> Good. I'm glad we have some of the class. Oh, that's wonderful. So my time is nearly up, so I will make this leap. Uh, Rockwood, uh, the Rockwood Training School for Nurses, like its parent institution, Rockwood Hospital, underwent many dramatic changes during the years. It's uh, the hospital would later become. Oh, is that your? <laughs> the. Um, it would later become the Ontario Hospital Kingston, 
and then in 1967 was renamed the Kingston Psychiatric Hospital. And uh, this, of course, is the final graduating class from 1971, at which time the program was transferred to St. Lawrence College. And this, of course, reflected a larger trend in uh, the hospital-based programs with transfer to, to colleges. I just wanted to finish with a quote uh, from Beryl Toplisky. She notes that the move from untrained asylum attendant to mental health nurse was a critical turning point in the care of insane patients, but psychiatric nursing has had almost no acknowledgement in this history. I hope that my discussion has shed some light on this history and also uh, that we recognize that these young women were the first and some of the first to pursue training in mental health as a specialty and as such they are pioneers in the larger nursing profession. Uh, their willingness to enroll in an untested, unknown environment for me really highlights uh, their, their courage and is the cause for greater acknowledgement and celebration. And I just want to acknowledge a few people. Uh, thank you very much, Alison Brown, as well as Kathy Clark and Karen Gagnon from Providence Care. Thank you.